So you're thinking of getting your first electric car. That's great news. Uh, your first question is probably, how am I going to charge it? Well, if you've got a driveway or a garage or some sort of off-road parking space near to your house, perhaps up front, on the side or around the back, that's probably the best way to initially see about charging your car. If you can charge at home, that gives you a freedom that you've never had with a petrol or a diesel vehicle. Now, you can charge an electric car just using a three-pin plug socket. Now, obviously, three-pin plug sockets are all over your house. They might have been in the garage. However, they're possibly not rated to do long-term charging of an electric vehicle, which is pulling 10 to 13 amps constantly over a long period. The electric car will need to be on charge for a long, long time, several hours at least, to give any sort of meaningful amount of charge into the car. And the problem with that is, of course, if it's a charge port, if it's a socket that's not been rated to take that load for such a long period of time, it can overheat. And we have seen issues where potentially uh, the, the plugs can melt or get or overheat and cause problems to the circuits. So make sure if you're going to use one of these sockets that you are using one which has been checked out by an electrician, make sure it's up to the task. Another thing to mention is, ideally, you wouldn't want to use any extension leads. For the same reason, extension leads are typically only rated for low loads for, a, for short periods of time, not to be left for 12, 13, 14, 15 hours overnight. So, again, make sure if you're going to use an extension cable that it's properly rated. Ideally, get one that's EV rated, and there is a BS kite standard for that. Uh, and make sure that, that it's not kept coiled because coiled cables can get very hot indeed. Another thing you've got to be careful of as well is because the plug sockets are not waterproof, it can be that dirt and, 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 and dust and, and water can get into those sockets and that can cause issues as well. Basically, a three pin plug socket is a great idea as a temporary measure, but longer term, we really ought to be thinking about having a dedicated off, uh, EV charger at your house. Now, a dedicated EV charger costs typically from £700 upwards, which is a lot of money, but there are some uh, payment plans which you can get. You can pay for them monthly, or you can get them rolled into the finance on your car sometimes as well. To speak to our, sale, our salespeople, they'll be able to advise you of the best option there. But these dedicated EV chargers, basically they can charge at 32 amps, so they'll charge sort of three or four times faster than they would on a three pin plug socket. So you're adding around 20 to 30 miles of range every hour that it's plugged in. And these chargers can either be tethered, which means they've got a cable attached to them, or they can be untethered, which means it's a, it's a type two socket and then you use a cable uh, to plug your car in one end and then the, into the charge the other. So that's the way, best possible way you could really charge your electric vehicle is at home. Now, if you don't have access to off-road parking, if you don't have a driveway, if you live in a flat or you live in a terraced house, that might not be possible. And so we're going to look at public charging. Now, public charging, you may have seen charge points in, for example, uh, supermarket car parks or public car parks in the town centre, or your workplace might have chargers. And if your workplace does have a charger, speak to your employer because that might be a great way of you charging your car daily or every so often when you're at work um, and it won't take you any more time out of your day. If you're charging at public supermarkets, again, there's a website called ZapMap, and that ZapMap website has um, a map which shows all the electric vehicle chargers around the UK, and also uh, it gives a really good uh, indication of what chargers speed they are, uh, whether they're fast or rapid chargers, um, whether they are, uh, there's a cost to use them, uh, whether you need to use contactless debit card, credit card, or whether you need an app particularly for that charger. So ZapMap's a really good resource. I'd recommend you look at that website. And then if you're doing you know, longer trips and you want to be able to charge away from home on a longer journey, then you need to look at rapid chargers. And these are large chargers with big thick cables attached to them. And they're typically 50, 150 or 350 kilowatts in power. And that means that they're putting in 400 volts at hundreds of amps. And that means it can charge a car much, much faster. So on a rapid charger, you might be you know, going from 10% to 80% in around half an hour. These do typically cost about twice as much, if not more, than charging at home. As a rule, for most economical driving, you're gonna charge at home uh, or on slower public chargers. Uh, if you're out and about and you're doing a long distance journey, for the convenience, you're gonna pay a bit more, but get a really, really fast charge in, say, half an hour or less. Hope you found this useful. If you've got any more questions, speak to our salespeople and they'll be happy to help. Never so much better with